In a peaceful cemetery on a cloudy day, an elderly man visits his late wife's grave. As he mourns his loss, he notices a stranger standing nearby, a woman he has never seen before. To his surprise, he hears her whispering something. As he listens closely, he catches the words, I'm sorry. What is she saying sorry for? But before we start, make sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Like any other Sunday, Humphrey visited the grave of his wife. It was a joyful moment for the old man, but little did Humphrey know this was no regular Sunday. Humphrey got out of his car, greeted the gardener, and continued to walk toward the grave. He brings the flowers up to his nose, causing him to lift his head a little. Because of this, he's looking in the direction of his wife's grave, where he sees the strange lady near the grave of his wife. After checking once more whether he took the right path, Humphrey gets closer and sees the lady with her back turned to him, looking over the grave of his wife. Somehow he is pleasantly surprised. It made him happy to realize he wasn't the only one visiting his wife. But Humphrey's happiness was to disappear, unfortunately. Humphrey friendly asks the lady, Pardon me, madam, who are you? But no answer. Humphrey repeats his question, this time a bit louder. While standing next to her, the woman looks at him with watery eyes and responds a bit hesitant and with a foreign accent. Does that matter, sir? So, Humphrey tells her, somewhat surprised, that he's the husband. The lady loudly sighs and seems shocked. What she did next was even more surprising to Humphrey. Is it her? He sees a woman who very closely resembles the woman from last week. He gets up right away, promises the waiter he'll pay later, and gets after the woman. The woman isn't very far away yet, and Humphrey sees her walking toward the cemetery. He sees her stopping at one of the graves and gets closer and closer to her. When he's close enough, he says, Excuse me, young lady. And the young woman turns around. Humphrey sees how the woman isn't the one from last Sunday. He apologizes and walks somewhat startled to his wife's grave. It's been a while since he talked to his wife while visiting her grave, but this time he had so many questions that he couldn't help himself. He leaves a poster on the gate of the cemetery. On the poster, he kindly asks the lady to reach out to him so they can talk, and nothing more. His phone would ring a few days later. Humphrey picked up his phone on a Wednesday afternoon. Who's this? He asks after hearing the voice of a woman. Then it gets quiet for a while, causing Humphrey to fear for the connection. Then she says, Are you the man who left a poster at the cemetery? Everything was looking bright, but things weren't as they seemed. After Humphrey confirmed it was him, the lady told him to stay away from the cemetery from now on. Before Humphrey can even wrap his head around this, the lady hangs up the phone. Humphrey is overwhelmed by the phone call, but somehow finds the courage not to think too much of it. He immediately hugs his dog. Humphrey is even more surprised by now. His daughter seems to know the woman as she hugs her back and starts crying as well. But who was she and why did she know his daughter and wife but not him? The atmosphere surrounding the trio was thick with unsaid words. Isabella's tear-filled eyes darted between Eleanor and Humphrey, finally breaking the silence. Eleanor whispered, Dad, this is Isabella. Their voices seemed to echo in the vastness of the cemetery. We were close, very close during our school days. Isabella gave a timid smile, nodding in affirmation. The bond between the two was undeniable as the memories flooded back. Eleanor and Isabella laughed amidst their tears, reminiscing about school plays, sleepovers, and shared secrets. Their closeness was evident in every shared glance, every touch. Humphrey watched an outsider to their shared history. He felt a growing urge to know more about Isabella's past and how his wife had factored into it. Seeing the puzzlement in his eyes, Eleanor nudged Isabella. Isabella, could you? She began, but the weight of the past seemed to press down on Isabella. Taking a deep breath, she nodded, guiding them to a weathered bench nearby. It's a long story, she began, her voice a mere whisper. But I think it's time you knew. Isabella's tale began in a land far away, where she was born amidst civil unrest. She spoke of her father, a brave journalist who went missing when she was just a toddler. Her mother, desperate to find safety for her only child, fled their homeland. They faced countless challenges as refugees, but the hardest part for Isabella was adjusting to a new culture, a new language. From that wet afternoon, their bond flourished. Eleanor, having faced her own challenges, understood Isabella's pain, and they found solace in each other's company. 
Seeing the potential in Isabella, Eleanor couldn't keep her newfound friend a secret. She introduced her to Margaret, her compassionate mother. Without a second thought, Margaret intervened, ensuring Isabella was given the same educational opportunities as her daughter. She became the guardian angel Isabella had prayed for, a beacon of kindness in a world that often seemed harsh. As the years rolled on, Eleanor and Isabella became inseparable, their stories intertwining like the threads of a rich tapestry. More than a benefactor, Margaret became a mentor. Every weekend, Isabella and her mother found solace in Margaret's cozy living room, practicing English pronunciation or learning about American holidays. When Isabella's mother fell ill, a mysterious benefactor covered their medical bills. Isabella suspected, but it was only later she discovered Margaret was behind these anonymous acts of generosity. The kind-hearted woman had a single condition, never to let Humphrey know of her assistance. Time has a way of shaping destinies. Eleanor's academic brilliance led her to a prestigious college, her dreams branching out into academia. Isabella, bound by responsibility, took on multiple jobs to care for her ailing mother back in her homeland. The air was different, heavy with nostalgia and scented with memories. The familiar surroundings invigorated Isabella's mother, making her days brighter. Every month, like clockwork, a letter adorned with U.S. stamps would arrive for Isabella. Margaret's neat handwriting narrated tales of Eleanor's achievements, snippets of American life, and memories they once shared. Each letter ended with the same words, Remember, you have a home here. These words became Isabella's anchor, a bridge between two worlds she dearly loved. One fateful day, a letter arrived not in Margaret's writing, but Eleanor's. With trembling hands, Isabella unfolded the paper, words blurred as tears welled up. Margaret had passed away. The news felt like a dagger severing a part of her soul. The woman who had been a beacon of hope in her life was no more. Amidst her sorrow, Isabella made a vow. She held her mother's hands and whispered promises of revisiting the land that had once embraced them. She wanted to stand beside Margaret's resting place to say the goodbye she never had the chance to. One day, she murmured, I'll return to honor her memory. Years rolled on. Isabella worked tirelessly, stashing away money for her pilgrimage to the U.S. Every coin saved was a step closer to fulfilling her promise. Upon stepping onto American soil once again, a whirlwind of sensations hit Isabella. The hustle and bustle of the city were both jarringly new and intimately old. Amid the melancholy, a silver lining emerged. Eleanor and Isabella, bound by memories of a time gone by, decided to rebuild their bond. They laughed, reminisced, and shared dreams of the future. Both realized that in keeping their bond alive, they'd be keeping Margaret's spirit alive too, honoring her silent wish for them. Inspired by a life filled with violent acts of love, Humphrey, Eleanor, and Isabella collaborated to establish Margaret's Haven. The foundation aimed to assist immigrants, providing them with resources, guidance, and a touch of kindness. As they unveiled the foundation's plaque, they knew Margaret's legacy would live on, touching countless lives just as she had touched theirs. As days melted into months, the pain of loss ebbed, replaced with gratitude for newfound relationships. Humphrey, once surrounded by the solitude of his grief, now found himself enveloped in warmth, understanding, and love. Eleanor and Isabella, reminders of Margaret's benevolent spirit, were a balm for his wounded soul. Time, the unstoppable force, marched on. Humphrey's once jet-black hair now gleamed silver, his steps slower but his spirit undiminished. Surrounded by love, he cherished every moment with Eleanor and Isabella, their company a gentle reminder of Margaret's enduring legacy.